ratio tables. So remember that a ratio is just a comparison of two quantities, and we can write that as a fraction. So here, I can look at my table, and these, it, the table is actually just a different way of writing fractions. This would be the fraction one-third, and it's comparing one soda to three juices. Okay, it's also saying two six, two sodas and three juices, or I'm sorry, two sodas and six juices, and also the fraction three ninths. It's com a ratio comparing three sodas to nine juices. Okay, so even though you see it in a table form, these really are just the fraction one third, the fraction two sixths, and the fraction three ninths. Okay, so what is the purpose? The purpose is that um, this makes it really easy to solve a variety of word problems, especially word problems where it's crucial that you keep units or organized. So here I can see that this table was compiled using skip counting. I skip count on the top by ones, and I skip count on the bottom by threes. For every one soda, there are three juices. So if there are two sodas, I have six juices, or three sodas, I have nine juices. Well, what if a question asked me, okay, so there are 50 sodas, how many juices are there? Okay, I w that means I would have to count up by ones up to 50 so that I could skip count by threes up to 50. There's a much faster way to solve these problems. And it's using something called scaling. And all scaling is means multiplying or dividing by the same number. So just like I can do with a fraction, I can say in order to get from one third to three ninths, I can multiply times three, which means I need to multiply the bottom times three. Essentially, all I'm doing is multiplying times one, because three over three equals one. Okay, so using this identity property, I can scale on a ratio table. Okay, so here, my ratio table, um, maybe the word problem is about making jam. And the recipe for jam says 12 cups of sugar are required for 16 pieces of fruit. Okay, so what if I have 20 pieces of fruit? How much sugar would I need? So you can use a ratio table to solve for the amount of sugar. And here, there's nothing that I can skip straight towards to get from 16 to 20. There's nothing I can multiply or divide by. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out either a common factor or a common multiple for 16 and 20. So um, I know that 16 and 20 have a common factor of 4. So I can put 4 in this middle box, which means to get from 16 to 4, Remember, if I just look at this as a fraction, so to get from 16 to 4, I would divide by 4. And if I divide by 4 in my denominators, I need to divide by 4 in my numerators. Okay, so the result of this would be 12 divided by 4 is 3. Okay, now I just have one more step. I need to now scale 3 fourths which is an equivalent fraction to 12 sixteenths. You can see I kind of just reduced 12 sixteenths to 3 fourths. Now I need to change 3 fourths so that the denominator is 20. So 4 times 5, but since I did that to the denominators, I need to do that to the numerators. 3 times 5 is going to give me a result of 15. So I know that for 20 pieces of fruit, I would need 15 cups of sugar, or whatever the word problem happened to be. Okay, so
So you might be given a blank ratio table to start with, or you might have to draw your own. As long as we remember units, and units are crucial for organizing this information. And you can abbreviate your units, but you need to make sure that you're matching up hours with hours. So these either both need to be in the numerator or they both need to be in the denominator. I can't put 14 as a numerator and 49 as a denominator because I have the same units. So um, it doesn't matter which one you put on top or which one goes on bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and just do, since lawns comes first, I'll go ahead and do lawns on top and hours on bottom. So once I have lawns and hours, I can go ahead and fill in just the original information that I know. The original information is he mowed eight lawns in 14 hours. So there's one ratio. My ratio is eight lawns to 14 hours. Okay, and once I have eight lawns in 14 hours, I'm solving for how many lawns could he mow in 49 hours? So 49 needs to go with my hours. And I'm going to go ahead and put it at the end of the box here because it might take me more than one step to get from 14 to 49. And indeed it does. I can't just multiply or divide times one thing to get from 14 to 49. Okay, so my first step, I need to find something that these two have in common. I could do a multiple. I could do uh, whatever 14 times 49 is. It's going to be a pretty big number, but that would be a common multiple for the two. Or you could see that 7 is a common factor. So I'm going to go ahead and use 7. So to get from 14 to 7, I need to divide by 2 which means I need to do the same thing to my numerators, or the same thing to the top part of my ratio table. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. And note, in these examples, it is coming out evenly. You might get a decimal on this top. As long as you're doing the same thing on the top and the bottom, it's okay if you end up with a decimal or a fraction answer. That is very likely, especially if you're talking about money. Okay, so now my next step to get from 7 to 49. 7 times 7 is 49, which means I need to do the same thing on the top row. 4 times 7 is going to be 28. So Joe could mow 28 lawns in 49 hours. It is really important, and I have this note at the bottom, that you always use labels for your units. Um, it's an also important just to go back and check your work. Make sure that each of the columns is filled with equivalent ratios. So 8 fourteenths and 4 sevenths, those are equivalent fractions. 4 sevenths and 28 forty ninths are also equivalent fractions. So I made sure that I didn't make any mistakes along the way. 